I want to do the fabric shelves, and that is a double hooping block in the candy corn quilt shop. And if you have been doing any kind of background quilting, there is one for the fabric shelves, but that's for the six by 10 hoop. You're not going to be able to do any background quilting if you have a five by seven hoop. But fortunately, the shelf block is taken up pretty much by applique fabric. You wouldn't be able to see it anyway, so you're really not missing out on a whole lot. You are going to want to, inside of your, fo your folder or on the CD, wherever you have the files still, the double hooping instructions are right here. You're going to click in there. Here is the one for the fabric shelves, and here's the one for the quilt shop. You're going to want to print these out and have them with you right by the machine. It's really important that you do that because the instructions in the book are for the 6x10 hoop. Don't follow those if you have a 5x7 hoop. If you have a 6x10 hoop, you don't have to do the double hooping and you can do your background quilting and all of that. So I'm going to go back here. I've already printed out my instructions. And here are the uh, embroidery files. Double click these. I'm going to go to PES for my brother machine. And here are the quilting files. And there is a folder in here called double hooping blocks. You don't want to use the fabric shelves file outside of that folder if you have a 5x7 hoop because the file that's out here is for a 6x10. So you're going to go into double hooping blocks and you've got four files in here. These last two are for the quilt shop. We're not doing that. We're doing part one of the fabric shelves. I'm gonna hold down the control key, so I've highlighted fabric shelves, hold down the control key, click part two for the fabric shelves, and then I'm going to drag those down with my mouse, and it's going to copy onto my USB. Okay, and I'm going to highlight it. And so here you can see there is part one and there is part two. So we're about to make the split hooping of the fabric shelves. I have printed out my directions and I have got my fabric here and I've notched it on all four sides like I always do. And I have some batting on the back just to keep the same consistency. I'm not going to do the background quilting but I'm just gonna keep the same consistency uh, with the rest of the quilt blocks. And so I put the batting on it and I adhered it using some KK2000 from Selkie. So the first thing we have to do is trim. They say you want your background fabric, which is eight and a quarter by 12 and a half. So I've got that. Fabric two is your shelves, which is five and a half by 10 and a half. And we are to cut that this, the gray is the back panel fabric, and the black are the shelves fabric. So we need to cut this into a five by five and a half. And I have got fusible woven on the back of all of my fabrics, including the one that with the batting. So all three pieces have fusible woven on the back of them. So I'm gonna cut a five inch piece for number one, and then it's a five and a half inch for number two. Okay, yeah, just to make sure I've got plenty. Okay, so we've got our two, this is part one and part two. And then this piece we need to cut into a four by four. So I need two pieces that are four by four. But that's okay, these are all gonna be trimmed. So here are the pieces for part one and here are the pieces for part two. I also have hooped a piece of the no-show poly mesh in my five by seven hoop and I have another piece of stabilizer ready to go for the second hooping. So I'm gonna put my fabric and my stabilizer together for the second hooping right here. And when we first start going it uh, for the embroidery instructions, now they want you to do a center fold and fold it long ways and like this 
okay? And then fold up one inch at the bottom because you just have to, you're gonna do that as an alignment and then you'll unfold it in the hoop. Now I'm gonna be jumping around with the thread a little bit just to minimize thread changes. Um, I think I'm gonna do that with the white. So I'm putting in my USB stick and embroidery pocket for memory. It's on the USB. It looks like part one is the uh, bottom half of the shelves. So I'm gonna touch the bottom half and set embroidery. I'm going to um, I'm going to do, it says neutral thread, I'm going to do everything in black so you can see it a little bit better. I have a 7511 needle, uh, embroidery needle in here. I'm using isocord thread and I have a 90 weight bobbin pre-round uh, in here already. So I am going to put my hoop in here, okay, and the very first stitch is going to be some alignment lines, and there's, it's going to do a long alignment line at the bottom with a little tick mark, and that's going to tell us where to place our fabric. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what's going on. Let's do the first stitch. I can see in my preview it is the alignment line. All right, so I'm going to remove the hoop just a little bit here. And I'm going to fold my fabric in half, just like it shows. And I'm going to fold up the bottom inch like this. Okay? And I'm going to put the fold right here on that tick mark so that the fold is aligned with the line and the fold is aligned with the tick mark. See what I've done? Let me move my fingers. Okay, that's how that looks. And I'm going to align the top of the fabric with the top alignment line. I wish I was left handed. At the top of the hoop so that I know that this is straight. And then I'm going to unfold it very carefully. Okay, and I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to tape it and a lot of this is going to get trimmed away so if it's not exactly exactly don't die over it. It's fine. I'm just going to tape this at the bottom just so it knows that that's where I want you to stay. So you're gonna have a lot of fabric hanging off the top of your hoop. That's the idea, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in back in here. All right, so our next thread is a tack down of the fabric. I'm gonna change out my thread to white because that's the color of the background fabric. It says you can use a neutral thread, but just to make life a little easier. Now you won't be able to see this stitch, but we'll switch back and forth so you can see what we're doing. Now I'll, I'll tell you, not every design that is too large for a five by seven hoop can be double hooped, unless you have something like Embrilliance Enthusiast with stitch editing mode and you can then turn larger designs into um, double hoopings. But if you have a regular, if you don't do that, you cannot create a double hooping if it's not digitized that way by the designer. Okay, so this is going to be the tack down for the fabric to the stabilizer to keep it in place. All 
right, so we've done that. So we've stitched the background placement line, place prepared background fabric at the bottom of the fold, do all that. We've done that, stitch the background tack down line, remove the tape. Okay, we'll remove the tape. Good. Now, stitch the fabric shelves part one placement line. So, fabric shelves, we're going to do in black. I'm going to do a thread color change to black so you can see it. So this is the placement line for the black fabric. You want to take your black fabric and place it over the placement line so you can't see any of it. You need half an inch or so all the way around to be able to have enough to grab a hold of and cut. So now we're going to stitch the tack down line for the black fabric. This is uh, number two in the instructions. Stitch the back panel part one placement line. So again, it is saying that it is a neutral color. I'm just going to leave black in. You're not going to be able to see it. But we are on number five in the instructions. Stitch the back panel part one placement line. Now there's a jump stitch that just happened. You want to trim that away. If your machine didn't cut it, mine didn't. So there's two small boxes. That's not going to be fun to cut in between. So I'm going to trim a piece off of this. Let's see how big that is. That box is 5 eighths. I'm going to cut a 5 eighths inch piece off of this. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I didn't cut these using the scan and cut. I don't know if you can or not. I didn't even look. I'm going to put a little glue stick right here and a little glue right here. I'm going to put this edge right on that stitch line right there so that I'm mimicking cutting it already. Okay. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to make like I've already cut that because I don't want to cut that. <laughs> that that's not fun. I know that already. I can, I can tell you. So we'll just pretend like we already cut it. And now it's going to do the tack down line for that stitch those uh, shelves. And if we miss it a little bit, that's okay, it's glued down. There's going to be a satin stitch that covers this. Now I'm going to trim away the extra. You guys trust me, that is not fun, trimming those tight little bitty pieces. There's those satin stitches next that's going to cover the edges of these shelves. The shelf bottom detail. These are in black and white. My color printer went kaputs. So the shelf detail in this book, let's see, is the gold, okay? And now it's time for the satin stitch for the 
shelves, so I'm going to switch to a black. And this next one's going to take 12 minutes. Okay, so what that big black satin stitch did was halfway cover the gold satin stitch. So that covered all of the edges of the fabric pretty good for the for the Nobody backing. Got me. <laughs> What's next? The spider web. We're going to change our thread color to white. The next stitch is for the green fat quarters, but I'm going to jump ahead uh, one by doing the white fat quarters next, just so I don't have to change my thread. So I'm going to hit the needle plus minus, and I'm going to thread plus minus, and I'm going to go plus one, and that's going to do the white. I'm going to tell it OK. Then I'll go back and do the green. I've got a jump thread right there, so I'm going to trim it right now. And I'm going to use the needle plus minus, and I'm going to go back two until I get to the green and tell it OK. I'm going to do my thread color change to green. And I'm going to hit the needle plus minus again and go forward to the orange. And I'm going to trim this jump thread. Whenever you trim jump threads, you always want to trim the end point first. So this thread went from here to here. So this is the end point. Trim that and it will jump up and stick up pretty good so you can get a hold of it. If you do it the other way, the tension isn't as much and sometimes they can be difficult to get a hold of. And we need a thread color change now to purple. So now I'm going to cut those purple jump threads and I'm going to do a thread color change to yellow. I'm going to change to black so that you can see the registration marks we're about to make. This is the last stitch and we're going to use these when we align part two of the design. Got a little loop and it got hung up on itself. Hold on. There. Didn't they put in a jump thread cut right there, a trim? Okay, so we finished part one. That was pretty easy. I'm going to cut this jump thread and trim up my little ends I had here. Okay, so now we need to hoop part two, and so we can pop this out of the hoop. Okay, so now we need to trim excess stabilizer away from the back of the design. And I'm just going to do it with my scissors and just kind of push. The first thing that's going to happen is the machine is going to make two little registration marks on the stabilizer itself. One thing you can do is to make sure that your hoop is pretty tight because you don't want those registration marks wobbling around after because you're going to be trying to push on the stabilizer with the top part of the fabric. 
so you don't want your stabilizer moving at all. So uh, get that, you know, just make it a point that your, that your hoop is nice and tight. Okay, so let's go. Remove the hoop from the machine. I'm going to trim the jump thread on the top and the bobbin thread on the back just to get those out of the way. Now you want thumbtacks, not push pins. So you want the kind that have the flat head. get these at the dollar store and you're going to take pieces of tape from the back of the hoop push the thumbtack in at the corner of the L the 90 degree angle point see how the see how the stabilizer is wanting to pull you don't want that pulling if you can avoid it so Hold the stabilizer from the other side if you can, and then take your tape and put it on there. This side, I'm going to hold the stabilizer taut and push that in. Okay. Now you're going to take your, make sure you put the bottom part at the bottom. You want to take your registration marks and you're going to put the thumbtack in the corner of the registration mark. Pop it through there. Might be kind of hard because, you know, you've got fabric, I have batting, and fusible woven on it. <clears throat> you're going to take another piece of tape and tape your fabric to the stabilizer. Hold that on there pretty good. Now you want to remove the thumbtacks from the back. Okay, great. I think that's right. Okay, now we're going to put the hoop back in. There's a tack down line for the top part of the fabric and it's not going to marry up with the tack down line from the bottom so don't freak out when it doesn't it'll be fine Next is the placement line for the shelves. So I'm going to do a thread color change to black. I remove my tape from the top part of the fabric now that it's got the tack down line on here. This is good. So the way they've got this lined up is um, with the middle shelf kind of sticking out a little bit. It doesn't have to marry up exactly um, vertically, but I mean it pretty much does. So this is going to work fine. And now I'm going to take my fabric for the top part and I'm going to make sure it covers all of the black placement line as much as it's possible. And now we're going to tack it down. Now,
Now you need to trim away the outside fabric around the outside of the shelf unit. Next is the placement line for the, uh, the gray fabric. Mm. Yeah. I'm just leaving that black. I'm going to do the same thing here and uh, measure out that top shelf and then cut this. Okay, I'm going to cut this just like I did the other one. I'm going to cut it about an eighth of an inch larger. I probably could have cut that a little bit bigger, but it's fine. Okay. Now the tack down for the shelves. And now I'm going to trim away this fabric. We're going to switch to gold for the shelf, the lower shelves. Okay, here's the heavy satin stitching for all around the outside of the fabric shelves. So it says it's going to take 14 minutes, so we'll see you back here in a bit. I am almost out of bobbin thread. I just got a notice from my machine. It has a sensor on it. The Luminaire, what you can do, this button right here is a knot button, so I'm going to press it and have it knot. And then cut. And that prevents you from having to back up like 10 stitches uh, if this happens to you. Otherwise, you would need to go into your needle plus minus and back up 10, 20 stitches, whatever, and start again. And that will lock down the stitches. As it crosses over, I'm going to lock them down again. But since we have the not button now, we don't have to do that. Just start again. Okay. I switched to a medium gray for the thread to do the top of the shelves. I am going to jump ahead to the green first so that I can minimize my thread color changes. <clears throat> Cut this jump thread. Now I am going to switch to white, but I'm going to back up and do the little thread spool that's on the top of the shelves first. to yellow for the yellow fat quarter. And we're all done. Great. You're going to want to take a seam ripper and uh, get rid of these little registration marks, pull those out. I have like no fabric up here at all. And so I'm going to be taking a piece of this fabric. I'll look for a scrap and I'm going to um, do some uh, paper dolls up here at the top. So you can see that. Look, I have hardly no fabric up there. I certainly do not have a seam allowance, that's for sure. So we're going to have to do some uh, magic and fix that. I've just got to give myself, essentially I'm sewing in a seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and leave this stabilizer right here as a, a back. Okay, so I have a scrap of this fabric and what I've done 
and it's a little bit longer than my piece. And what I've done is I have folded up one edge to give it a nice clean edge. And I have a piece of stitch witchery right here, which is a permanent bond. It's not like steam seam And I'm going to put this right here just so it doesn't come over the edge of the fabric. And now I'm going to set this, I mean, like right on it. Fold that over. trying not to get the stitching covered. Let me touch this just a little bit. There. Okay. I don't want to cover the stitching at the top of the shelf. I'm gluing a piece of fabric to it. And that is really going to be like the seam line for the quarter inch seam or darn close. You're really not going to notice it when it is in quilt itself. You'd have to look. I'd have to point it out. That looks pretty good. Now I am going to center this block so that I've got an, as much fabric up here as I do down here and get it kind of centered.